In 2005, uh, Southern Garden Citrus was one of two commercial grove operations that the state of Florida confirmed that we had infected trees in our groves with the citrus greening disease. Uh, the technical term is Huang Long Bing. Uh, this is a bacterial disease that's transmitted by an insect, the Asian citrus psyllid, that's as prevalent as the mosquito. Uh, it's widespread today throughout the state of Florida. It's a bacterial disease that has the ability to get into the phloem, into the nutrient delivery system of the tree and plug the, plug the phloem up so nutrients can't get to the tree and allow the tree to first produce fruit and then ultimately live. Uh, it's a bacteria that's never been cultured in the world. It's a disease that's in the uh, citrus industry throughout the world and um, it's a challenge for all of us right now. Found in Florida in 2005, detected in Brazil about 18 months before that, Brazil and Florida are the two primary citrus growing regions in the world. So the, the, the bulk of the citrus industry today is um, affected by that disease. Every form of citrus is susceptible to this disease. Oranges, grapefruit are the most susceptible down to lemons that um, may not be the most susceptible, but every form of citrus, lemons, limes, uh, mandarins, clementines, oranges, grapefruit, every form of citrus is affected by this. We're in this, we're in this situation where this, this disease is affecting the industry. There's been a lot of research done over the years. There's a significant amount of research being done now by the industry because it's in the major producing areas. No other short-term solution has been found. Every researcher in the world familiar with the disease has indicated that the ultimate solution will be biotechnology. Now, if we could find a different solution, a quicker solution than, than biotech, we would jump on it in a heartbeat because we've got the trees that are dying today, but ultimately it looks like biotech is gonna be the way to go. So several of the projects that we're working on are, are in that vein. We're looking at different things. We've got, we've got projects where we're developing disease resistant trees. We're doing a project here at Cornell where we're working on a project that's an insect resistant tree. If we can design a tree where the, where the Asian citrus psyllid is basically wants no part of the citrus tree and won't go to it, it can't transmit the disease. Ultimately, the plan will be down the road that we'll take a disease resistant technology and an insect resistant technology and we'll combine it. I think it's ultimately the only potential. If we don't use science, we're going to have a problem somewhere down the road in the world because we've got challenges with water. You know, China has billions of acres of land. They don't have enough water to take care of that land. You know, we've got, we've got issues today in California with water. Is that a short-term problem? Maybe, maybe not. We've got to figure out a way to use science to ensure that we have the food supply to, to feed the world feed the United States people. We have the safest food supply in the world in the United States. But at the same time, we've got, we've got multiple challenges like this greening disease with citrus that, that has the potential to wipe out the, the citrus industry. We've got to do a better job of communicating the opportunities in all of this. Because again, we can, we can grow food in different ways without biotech, but we can't produce as much, we can't produce the quality, and we certainly can't produce it at the cost. So if the cost goes up at the expense of, of no biotech, then we've got a different problem. Our food supply is safe for a reason. We have, we have rules and regulations that we have to follow to ensure that we have a food, safe food supply. The work we're doing on citrus and, and using biotechnology, we're doing work on research, we're doing work on regulatory, we're doing work on agriculture. We've got to solve and educate the consumer, but if, if we do the first three right, we've got a safe and effective and a productive product, and we satisfy the consumer, everything should work well. If we don't satisfy the consumer, the first three don't matter. But it, it's, the, the rules are there, the regulatory process is there, we have to work within it. You know, if, if something were to happen where we couldn't work our way through the process on citrus, and biotechnology is the answer, but it won't be accepted for whatever reason, then maybe we don't have citrus. Now, can we live without citrus? Probably. But what's, what's the next product that, that could come into play that might be faced with the same, same feelings and so on? 